Well, good evening. Happy Saturday night. I'm Aaron with Bowtie Treasures. I am a Dixie Bell content creator. So happy that you all can make it here tonight. Excited for what we have. Keeping it simple tonight. Last week we did some blending, some stencil work, some gilding wax. Tonight, I'm going a little bit more comfortable and cozy. I have a vintage buffet. And oftentimes when I get these vintage buffets, they look really nice, more of a cream, neutral finish. I know a lot of you probably like the cream white gray look and it's maybe popular in your area. And that's kind of the, that's pretty much the look I'm going for. So it seems like about every week I'm on a different style and tonight's uh, kind of an ode back to an old, comfortable, cozy, vintage look. We'll call it antiquing. And I wanna talk about how I'm going to accomplish it. And I'm looking forward to sharing that with you tonight. As you pop in, say hi, let us know where you're watching from. Maybe if you've worked on something like this before, that's always nice to know, or if you're catching this on replay, I'm gonna do my best to walk you through the steps one by one and keep it simple tonight, because it is somewhat simple. And I'm excited to, uh, that you're here and you can join us as we're working on this project. It's already good. Um, tonight we have this is the sh cabinet. I've taken the doors off and I've also taken the drawers out mainly because, and here's the situation or reason why, oftentimes when, my, when the drawers overlap the cabinet, it's easier for me to paint the cabinet with the drawers out. If the drawers go into the cabinet, I oftentimes will leave them in. So that's the main reason I've taken everything off so I have easy access to the full edge. And then I put a little bit of tape here just to keep a nice clean edge. Don't have to worry about the paint getting inside. So that's what we've done. There's a couple products that I wanna talk about and I've done a video, it's been a while, comparing different ways to do the antiquing techniques. This one here is Dixie Bell's Van Dyke Brown Glaze. And this product has a bit of top coat in it so it feels different than let's say a gel stain feels. And this is Tobacco Road. These two do really well. The third way I could do antiquing on this is with like chocolate, chalk mineral paint. I'm not gonna do that tonight. And when I use that, I use that a lot and I'll call that shading, but there's three ways to accomplish it. They all look about the same, but they act a little different. For example, the Van Dyke Brown, because it has the glazing in it, it is a little bit more workable um, and it has a little bit of a sticky consistency because it has some of that um, that um, top coat in it and it works really well with something like a Dixie Dirt. I'm not going to use Dixie Dirt tonight. This is the earth color, but the Dixie Dirt gives it a little bit more of a grungy feel. <laughs> I want to keep this clean. So you can almost even pretend or assume that this is a kitchen cabinet. So if you ever want to do your kitchen cabinets and you really like that antiquing or uh, aged look, assume this is a kitchen cabinet. So same concept. Tonight or earlier, I have already put two coats of sandbar on this dresser or dresser, this buffet. I first cleaned it with white lighting, added a coat of gray boss, and then did two coats of sandbar. Sandbar is a really lovely color. It's a little darker than say buttercream or drop cloth, but it's not as dark as say a burlap. So it's just a nice uh, cozy color that I like quite a bit. Okay, so the other thing that I would have handy is have some kind of spray bottle. This is Dixie Bell's spray bottle. It has a continuous spray and uh, this works really well. Maybe it takes a little practice compared to maybe a bottle that uh, has a different type of uh, squirt. So if you need lots of water, that's a great, that's a great uh, bottle to use. The other thing that you'll want to have that I like to have is just a uh, little towel or rag that's been, that's a little damp that allows me to wipe off any of the excess, which we will be doing. I will tell you that one of the diff dis another difference, because the Van Dyke has uh, some top coat to it, I usually use gloves for this because it can be a little, be a little messy but I still like the glaze, but I have also really liked Tobacco Road. This is a water-based. This gel stain is not oil-based, so you can wipe it right off. And it doesn't have that top coat in it. So, it, and I'm going to do this 
I have not put uh, one of the common questions I get with this is did, have, did I top coat first and I have not. So if you keep your surface wet, work quickly, you shouldn't have to top coat something like this. The other thing that I like to do sometimes is have a brush. You know, you could use a one inch. I like to use the natural bristle brushes they have. So tonight, sometimes I'll use the French tip. This is the Dixie, this is the bell brush. So I think I'm gonna use this one just to be a little different. I've been using this French tip a lot lately, but I let's change it up. The other one that you could use if you're using a large surface, the La Petite brush, it has a, you can see how much bigger it is. I don't need that big of a surface, so I'm, I'm not gonna use that one tonight, okay? And again, as you, as you watch and you have questions, feel free to pop those in, and I will look at those here in a, a little bit, uh, especially later tonight. Okay, keep in mind that when you're, if you don't top coat, you are going to probably tint your painted surface a little bit. And I actually don't have a problem with doing that. So what I'm gonna do is get this into a container so that I can brush it on. I'm gonna go ahead and get, this is a flat small. This is a nice comfortable size for what we're doing. You work with what's best for your project. So did you notice what I was just doing? You need to shake up the bottle. The, the, the product wants to settle and you need to mix it up because you don't want to have, when you squirt the bottle out, you don't want to have clear liquid. So let's see how I did, okay? So when I do this, you see how it's nice and um, that's what you, you don't want to have clear liquid. If you have clear liquid, I would stop squeezing and keep shaking, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do here is we're gonna wet it down. I'm just gonna do a quick wet of anywhere that I expect to put the, the Voodoo Gel Stain. This is really great stuff for, and I'm also going to even use, let me just show you real quick. I'm going to even use, this is, this is the top and I say sanded it a couple nights ago. I'm gonna use Voodoo Gel Stain to stain the top as well. So it's all gonna tie together when I use this for the antiquing and for the stain, it's gonna unify it. Okay, here we go. So I'm just gonna put this in there. What we wanna do, all I need to do is get it into the crevices of where I'm working. I need to remember you guys are right there. And I'm gonna work fast, okay? If it starts drying on you, you didn't put enough water or you didn't spray enough and there goes my water bottle. Good thing I have two, right? You should see how, you should feel it being somewhat thin. Okay, let me set that to the side and I'll give it a quick mist. I don't want any of this drying. Here's where we're gonna wipe it away. If you have this wet, notice how I'm gonna go in the same direction. I have it on a little small mini, uh, lazy Susan. That's what you hear rattling, okay. This is where you, again, you wanna work quick. So I'm, I'm wiping in the same direction. And I'm taking the chance that I can do this. I can do all this. In other words, I put all the voodoo gel stain in one, in one time. If you want, practice doing one direction first before doing all four, but Based on experience, I kind of felt like I should have enough drying time to not have to only do one section at a time. And I could see that I have a little extra Voodoo gel stain on the flat part, and I'm just giving a little bit extra white. Don't put a lot of pressure on this. Looks like I've got a fiber right there. Let me get that off. What I mean by that is don't rub so hard that you're starting to rub your paint off. But if you, if you wind up distressing it, isn't that part of the idea is kind of give it a nice antique look, maybe for you. All right. Now keep in mind, um, I had painted one coat of sandbar yesterday and one coat of sandbar this morning. So that's plenty, to me, that, that's enough time to let this paint dry 
so that it, I'm not wiping paint off. If I painted it two hours ago, I'd probably be wiping part of that paint off. Let me just bring you in. So the top one has the antiquing. This one has nothing. That's the difference. There is my, that's the difference from the two. You may like one or the other, but it's that, that's how quick you can go with this. So this is before, and then this is after, okay? It, this is ready for top coating now. Well, when it's dry, it's ready. Let's keep going, okay? So I've got three doors to do, so I'll repeat these steps for you. Using Dixie Bell's Mr. Bottle. Back to my Voodoo Gel Stain. We're gonna apply it quickly. You don't need a bunch on your brush, just enough to coat it on there. You are wiping a lot of this away. Focusing there. Okay, now we're ready to wipe it off. Damp rag. I'm not trying to push the rag into the crevices because that's where I want to keep the voodoo gel stain. If I was using the, uh, the glaze, it would be sticky on my hands right now. And it might have a little bit of a longer drying time, but I do the same exact step for both product. I wet the surface first. I know a lot of people like the top coat first so that the stain wipes off really easily. I've just never really felt that that is needed for me because I feel like I work fast enough, or in small enough sections that that's not an issue. Now, I will tell you, and I'm probably gonna regret it later that I should have had two rags ready to go because as much wiping off I'm gonna do tonight, that may be helpful. In other words, because you're wiping off so much, sometimes it's nice to have a nice clean rag. So just look for now, I'm just looking for areas that maybe have a little bit extra voodoo gel stain that I don't want. So here's an example. So you can see my rag is already collecting brown. So keep moving your rag around so that you can get a nice clean surface. And you know a while ago, by the way, I said I was gonna use this brush. I'm not using it in this step. I may use it on the cabinet itself. And, um, but if you wanted to, you can wipe it in there to blend that down. But I'm letting, the rag's doing that for me right now. So I'll demonstrate that later. Okay, so that's two. And let's do one more. Fix one spot and I'll be back over there. Okay. And I don't stress too much about getting my, all my blending and everything, all the wiping down exactly perfect because I'm closer to this piece now than most people will be. So don't over critique your work. Just keep it con somewhat consistent. If you're gonna be messy, messy all the way, all the way around, if you're gonna be precise. Well, if you're gonna be precise, you probably can't work this fast. I just, I'm working at about a pace that I would recommend you, you work as well. to have a little bit but I am looking for areas that just stand out as you know that's gonna dry awkwardly like here go the same direction at least if you're gonna have some streaking in there that makes it look old it's gonna be in the same direction and those are just little things you might try but right now I'm just kind of inspecting it you can I will tell you this you can apply this gel stain to the whole surface but I would get the middle part done. And then if you want staining on all this, like you want to tint it, do that second. So you're not having to wipe the whole piece down. But if you want staining on all of this, like to give it a little, almost like a tea 
tea staining, then wipe the whole piece. So there's, it really brings out the details. And if I bring you in closer, you'll see that some parts have a little bit of buildup. You just have to decide. And for me, the antiquing phase, I think it needs to be somewhat inconsistent, not perfect. And you can let this dry and put another coat on if you really want to. So that, that's, that's done. So we've done three doors just like that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, and I, as you can see, I haven't done any, so I'm gonna try this out. What I'd like to do is just put a little bit on the edges because I want to create somewhat of a blended glow in the middle. I have to kind of work quickly again here. Then I'm going to mist it, and this is where I'm going to use my bell brush. What I'm going, I'm looking for a vignette look. And I tell you what, it's not quite perfect. Let's see what would happen if we use the, since it's so flat, let's try it. I saw AJ here, she's still here. She, she was using this brush last night. It's a really nice brush. I'm kind of creating, you know, I think the perfect word for this since we're talking about antiquing is vignette. I'm creating a vignette look. That's really nice. I think that's, that's the look I'm looking, in my mind, this is what I was expecting to achieve. Now, this is where I might change my mind and say, let's go back to the best dang brush and try that. So let's take a look. So the one on closest to me has been vignetted. I think that's kind of cool. It'll give me that aged, worn, cozy feel right so here I am going to be misting it with water now I'm taking the voodoo gel stain and I'm just putting a little bit around the edges you kind of want to repeat the same technique you did the last time or your vignette might be different but I'm not super stressed about it because guess what we always say we could just paint it over I could wipe it off and try and paint over it all right, what did I do next? There we go. On the last one, I did not wipe anything off. So this is the bell brush. I'm using the bell brush just to, uh, just to spread it out, okay? Make sure everything's nice. And, and then we, we use the Bestang brush. I feel like I'm going a little darker than the last one. So this is where I might have to just kind of keep an eye on it. Yeah. I definitely am. All right, let's talk about how to fix it. So let's do a quick wipe just to remove some of the paint, some of the, and then, so all I just did there was to remove some of the voodoo gel stain. I just put too much on. Easy fix, it's water-based. Now on this one, I feel like I'm going a little bit further into the into the middle. So I'm gonna get my rag back and I'm gonna wipe the middle. I want that halo, that vignette to be a little bit bigger. Got a little bit of time to work, not a lot. So we're doing a little problem solving. You can go left and right if you want, that's fine. And I'm not gonna super stress if they're not perfect. Remembering that there's gonna be hardware in the middle that's really going to stand out more than the vignette will at least i'm hoping so i don't expect that these are going to be perfect and i'm i'm kind of okay with that i can already tell that this one's a little bit darker in the middle so this is the kind of technique that if you feel like you're going to do a lot of it do three of them if you think you need to change your technique just do a quick repaint and do the technique over that's okay. I've not really done this before on a drawer that's flat. So I, I'm kind of trying it out. I think it's gonna to come together. 
So here we go again, missed it. I'm gonna try and be a little bit more conservative with the gel stain, but it's not a perfect science on how much you can get on there. So just be pre prepared to adjust. Okay, then I'm gonna take the bell brush, smooth it out, spread it out, soften it up, give it its first blend. Okay. Can we do this with other brushes? No doubt. Like um, oval small maybe? May, I don't think I, the nice thing about this one is I can put a little bit of pressure on there and give it a good mix. I'm doing the sides real quick. Go back and forth. You can do back like this and then mix it in. I'm really kind of experimenting to see which feel I like best. Not that you have to do all these techniques. I'm just kind of saying, you know, what if I use this brush? You're kind of learning. You're seeing how you're experiencing it with me. The key here is if you're going with an aged look, it's okay if it's imperfect. And I think that's really coming together. I'm going to give it a little bit of corrective adjustment to straighten that out a little bit. You may have to wipe off your best stain brush a little bit if you feel like you're getting, you're doing too much paint on there. That's kind of cool. After a minute or two, maybe about where I'm at, it's gonna start getting sticky and you need to stop. And we're gonna see how that works. So we've done all three of those and they're gonna have a nice ghosted soft feel. So we've aged three techniques or three types of spaces. What I love doing when I come on live is showing you guys pretty much when you see me finish the piece, you know how I did it. I'm not holding back. Sometimes I might do a couple more steps off camera, but for the most part, the main bulk of the piece you've seen me do. I'm gonna drop the camera because we're gonna come down a little bit lower and work on this. So let's work on this section here. How would you do a corner or an edge like that? All the same supplies. So I'm gonna go back to my mister bottle and I'm just gonna mist where I'm going to, I'm not gonna go all the way up the side. Sometimes when you see me demonstrate, you'll hear me use the word shading. This is kind of what I, when I say shading, this is about what I'm doing, but it, usually when I'm shading, it's not this much contrast. So that's, this is, I'm gonna go back to the bell brush. You pick the brush that works best for you. See how I'm just softening that edge? And just like I did on the drawer fronts or the uh, door fronts, I'm gonna wipe off any excess voodoo uh, gel stain that I don't want. And I might come back, wipe off my bell brush and give it one more. I really don't want to push a lot of paint right now. I'm softening it, feathering it, blending it, vignetting it. You pick the word that works for you and that's it. So if you don't want it to come to the edge much, wipe this part here too. And that, that gives it, it's um, the, the look you're going for is almost like over time it's gathered dust and they just couldn't wipe all, it all clean, that kind of thing. That's, that's a little bit of that look. Let's move to the front. If you need to use a bigger brush for a bigger space, that's fine too. So let's work our way all the way across. There is decorative molding up here. If I can get my camera that low so you can see up in there, I'll, I'll do that. We'll keep an eye on the top. We're doing great. So here, this is where the continuous spray bottle helps. You can go this whole long, span back to my voodoo gel stain 
just a nice, simple, let's get it in the corner. I'm gonna mist it one more time because it's such a long span. And I tell you what, I'm going to reverse what I did on the other side. I'm gonna wipe first just to get off the excess because I was kind of fighting it. Now I'm gonna go back to the bell brush and do the final softening. Looks like I kind of went around the corner there. This can be done with the French tip or another one inch small. You're just, you're just, um, what do you call it? You're just fading that. You, where I started up here has a lot more so it's being a little bit more demanding of my attention at the beginning. So you're really just wiping off, fading it. And I'm gonna go up the front a little bit too. Just do as much as you feel comfortable that the piece needs. Got a little bit on the, okay. So this is like an upside, it's like molding, crown molding on a, on a on a room. So we're going to be working a little bit. Oh, did my camera just go out? Sorry about that. I'm trying to figure out a good way for you guys to see what I'm doing. All right, I'll do my best to keep you uh, so you can see, but this is only about half of it and I'll try and move the camera here in a second. Okay, mist. I tell you what, let's move, let's work about halfway and then we'll do the other app. I think we can make that work. So into my cup, and I think I want to do this whole section just like I did the inside of the tour front. And let's go down the side. I didn't think about that, but a little mess there. So underneath, we'll go about this far, and then that's about as far I feel comfortable before. Let's see if I can get this thing to. There we go, just focusing on the wall. So I'm just wiping it off. Get all the excess out that you need that's there. Now because I did it before, feel free to use your bell brush or whatever you're using to soften on the flat part. That works fine anywhere really. And wipe off excess where necessary. So this whole technique I've been using tonight is really just to keep putting voodoo gel stain in the crevices and cracks. But if you want to tint your piece, then you would want to plan on covering the entire area. Because like what I just did right there is going to stain it. So you're wiping off where you don't want to be, where, where you don't want it to stain. But keep your water bottle handy because that's your secret ingredient to keep things from drying and getting not the way you want. Okay. So it's just management of time and the technique. Let me move you down and we'll do, so you can hopefully see the left side is not done. It's a little dark. And if I can get my, if you give me one second, I'm gonna drop my light. So the left is undone, the right is done. It's a little bit, it's a different tone, different look. So let me work on the left side with you. Pretty much just repeat the steps. Missed. So we pretty much have worked all the way across, but keep in mind, I'm not too, too worried because you hardly will, I don't know who's even gonna see a lot of that, but it's done. And I think that helps just keep the look consistent all the way through. 
I'm not gonna do any of the flat panels. I don't think it makes sense. The cabinets will be in front of that. So I think we'll be all right. I hope I've given you some tips to try. And again, I'll, I'll go back and look at the comments. I'm really happy with how the drawer fronts are coming out. It's stained, just subtle, soft, brings out all those cracks that normally would not have been brought out. So I'm excited to uh, see this on the cabinet front. It'll, it's gonna, just make it pop. So when I say cozy, this is what I, I think of when I think cozy is warm tones, nice and easy, soft technique, nothing bold and crazy. We could have gone bold and crazy, we could have blended, but I think this is the look that this vintage piece needed. And I know a lot of you like to go this route with your piece, so hopefully that gives you some things to try. Well, I'm gonna go catch my breath. I've been crazy 42 minutes we flew through it i hope it's helpful let us know if you have any questions or comments holler at a, a friend that might could use this i'm looking forward to seeing many of you go over and uh, check out my facebook page and uh, be sure to use that link in the description if you want to check out the products or find a retailer in your area that would be really great i'm always live on my facebook page friday nights about 8 30 sometime if you want to check out what we did last night that was a lot of fun there I'm married with Bowtie Treasures, the content creator for Dixie Bell. As always, stay creative, do something awesome out there. Have a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you next time. Y'all take care. Bye-bye. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.